Okay, hang on. What was the so last thing? Things. I just want to make sure we've actually covered everything that you had brought up. Hang on. Uh, dynamics of families, how they affect our state of mind, what defines us from culture and expectations and inherent guilt. I think, I think we've covered it. How do we shake that off and how do we end the generational trauma we inherited? Hmm. Actually, guilt. That's a question. <sighs> <laughs> what a wasted emotion that is. When do you reckon you started hearing it? Like the whole guilt the thing. guilt? Yeah. Ooh. Me personally? When I was probably about nine. That early? Yeah. Yeah, my parents thought it would be a great idea to send me to Greece when I was nine years old with my great-grandmother to stay with her for three fucking months. Um, and, uh, you know, I had a few altercations and run-ins with her <laughs> and she would ring my dad and my mum and say, God, you saw your daughter's being a shithead. And my dad would get on the other side of the phone and say, if you fucking embarrass me, I'm going to fucking kill you when you come back. So that's where my guilt started and my anxiety and my depression and I was covered from top to toe in eczema. I developed severe eczema when I was nine years old and I suffered from that until my dad passed away when I was 25. Why did they send you to Greece? Because they thought it would be a good experience and I said that I wanted to go (laughs) at nine years old. Yeah, it was horrifying. You know, I got there. I had no idea. I got some pretty traumatic stories around that. We can talk about that another time. I, um, yeah, I, I did a lot of growing up, but not in a good way, in the sense that it definitely shaped me and all these abandonment issues, you know, feeling like when I came home, I was going to be basically annihilated (laughs) because I embarrassed the family. Um, and they, you know, I got on a plane on my own. They put me on a plane in Athens um, and I basically flew with um, <clears throat> all the way back to Melbourne on my own as a nine-year-old and I remember the stewardess took me up into the pilot's cockpit back then we were allowed to go up. Um, but, yeah, that was where my trauma started. So, And it's just been work in progress ever since. I remember when, um, yeah, when I went to that trip to by myself to Cyprus mm. And then I left Cyprus to go to Greece. Mm. <clears throat> and I still remember before I left Cyprus, yeah. I was set to meet my old man's family, yeah. like his extended family that I hadn't met yet. Mm. And I remember he said to me, get yourself cleaned up. Because <laughs> like I'd left Melbourne. I think I had like a mohawk or something. Yeah, right. And I said, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. yeah it's like, well, you know, just don't don't go looking like, like shit like basically. That. Yeah. And I said- I will go, mm. and I, I remember saying something to the effect of, I will go when I want, no. where I want, mm. and how I fucking want. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I will go fucking shave my head down right now and get fucking face tats if I have to. <gasps> so just stay the fuck off my back. Yeah, I right. still remember saying that to him. Yeah. And he went like horrified. Yeah. I landed in Greece. Yeah. Hadn't seen my auntie in 25 years. Yeah. Actually, maybe it's an exaggeration. Maybe 15, 20 years. Okay. Yeah, I was probably- So the last time she saw you were a teenager. I was a kid. Yeah. The last time I'd seen her was, I was, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm skipping ahead. 13 years old, I was probably, and then I was 25. So 12, yeah, 12, 13 years. And I get off, like I meet her at the airport and she grew up here. She grew up in Paran, actually. Mm. So it was like, you know, familiarity, you know what I mean? Of course. I hadn't seen her in that long. It's not like we kept at buffets, but, you know- I get off the plane in Athens and there's someone speaking to me with a Melbourneian accent, mm. you know. She's like, hey, how are you? I'm like, yeah, good. She says, how's your flight? Okay, good. Blah, blah, blah. Four minutes while we're walking away from the carousel, mm. her phone rings. Oh, my God. Don't tell me it's your dad. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just gone. That's hilarious. Hello. She's like, oh, speak of the devil. It's like, hey. And like, she's like, you know, yeah, just got him. Yep. What do you mean? He looks fine. <gasps> Jesus. Literally. Fuck. Literally. So fucked up, right? Literally. Oh, my God. How did you contain yourself? I was just, I just shook my head. I just shook my head. Yep. I just went. <sighs> Again, face, isn't it? Uh, it's really? All about face. Really? Yeah. So, you know what I did? What and I had, the plan, I had a plan to do this the whole time. Yeah. Before I even got to Greece. Mm. I peroxided my head. Awesome. Yeah. I <laughs> said it to my auntie. Yeah. 
I said, she goes, what do you want to do while you're here? I go, honestly, first thing I want to do is I'm going to get my hair done. She goes, like hair. And she's like lighting up a dart. Yeah. She's like, what do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I want to go gray, almost gray white. And she's like, <laughs> I know a guy. I'm like, sweet. Love it. And she took me to like this salon in like an ugly father that's like oh, love ugly father. hairdressers to the stars. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. She goes, we're going to go see Stavro. I'm no, like, All right, Stavro. Sweet. And then like, when I, I remember speaking to, because she lives obviously in the, she lives in the building where her sister lives below her as well. Yeah. So it's the two families in the one block or whatever. Yeah. And I remember when we got the building and we're talking, and I remember saying like she's like, oh, so what, what are you going to do in the next couple of days? I said, oh, I'm going to go get my hair done. And um, I go, yeah, my aunt is uh, the other ones said she's going to sort it out for me. And then I think my uncle was like, are you going to go see Stavro? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Everyone knew Stavro. Yeah. Love it. I go, why? He goes, oh, no, you'll have fun. I'm like, all right, cool. Was Stavro Pustien? He was definitely um, flamboyant. I love him. But his English was impeccable. He spent Excellent. a lot of time in New York. New York, yeah. Yeah. But he was legit like a superstar. Beautiful. Yeah. And the haircut would have cost him like 100 euros. Shit. Back in 2009. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. For a haircut. Did it look amazing? Oh, I looked the shit. Yeah, right. And then my auntie said, "We're going. Okay, we're going shopping." Like, what do you mean? She's no nephew of mine is going to go meet these fucking uh, what she call them? Like um, <laughs> yifty? Nah, it no, it wasn't yifty. It was something like something to that effect. But yeah, she's no nephew of mine is going to go meet these people. Yeah, looking the way he's looking because I was wearing like just Melbourne gear. You yeah, know what right. I mean? Yeah. So we went to like Zara and like of did a whole day shopping. I Amazing. literally rocked up looking like I was going to like MTV. Million bucks. You know? Yeah, red carpet. And then I got there. And then they called my old man up and the f- they all freaked because they saw me a bit like blonde, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. They all lost their shit. They thought I was like a celebrity. <laughs> and they called Melbourne up, talked to my old man and like, oh, we were expecting, we weren't expecting this. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, you could sort of get the vibe of the convo. Yeah. Like, oh, it's impossible. You know what I mean? Oh, dear. Obviously, my old man would have had a heart attack, man. Died. Heart attack. Too like, funny. there's no way known. Yeah. Fuck. But. It's like, what are you going to do, fuck with me on the other side of the planet? Nothing. And what I'm grown, I'm 25. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's gold. At least you've got some good memories of that. Oh, yeah. It's that fabulous. trip was eye-opening. Yeah. You know, being away for, I was away for three and a half months. Yeah. I came back because of work. Yeah. And that's when I learned the most. Yeah. You know? Traveling on your own is like my, an, an amazing experience. You learn so much about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, it's, it's, but you can't do, I couldn't do it now. Why not? I could, but it'd be a different holiday. Yeah, but you're in a different place. I know. So that it, it would just be a different experience. Um, I'm sure you've got plenty of things on your bucket list. Oh, bucket list. Never ends. <sighs> bucket list, I don't think people actually get done, man. No. Bucket list just become this fabled Myth of like unreachable shit. Well, mm. half the stuff's completely reachable. Of course it is. You yeah. got to be realistic about I, it. Dude, I said, I, I said to the old man, like he's. We're talking about um, because I, 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 I've got five rifles, right, mm. that I've inherited from him. Okay. And we're talking about how the gun range in Springvale. I said I, the last time I went was when I had this mate of mine who had come up with a list of things that she wanted to do before she turned twenty one, and mm. one of them was firing a gun. Mm. And I remember saying, to her, I, I can do that. She goes, what do you mean? I said, get my old man's rifle, go to Springville Range, there's a gun. She's yeah. like, oh my God, it's incredible. Whereas I grew up around rifles. Right. I'd find my first gun when I was like six, seven years old. Really? On a farm? Yeah, my uncle's farm in yeah. Amadura. Awesome. See, that's not a bucket list thing for me. That was done- When you were a little tyke. Yeah. Yeah. But- But that would be a bucket list thing for me. But that's what I mean. <laughs> so, have you actually looked at firing a gun? No, but it's on my list. Okay, now, but that's what I'm after saying. Today. <laughs> no, but th- that's my point. Yeah. How, how strongly have you looked at your bucket list? Some of this shit's probably completely attainable. Yeah. Do you that's know what I mean? Very true. I, my my cousin's got a bucket had a had for a fortieth. Yeah. She wants to jump out of a plane. Yeah. You know? and she had for she wanted to jump out of a plane and she wanted to get her sleeve done. Nice. She'd never started it. She had. a Tell them back. So when I rocked up to the first Christmas yes. and I've got my the first parts of my sleeve out, she's like, oh, my God. Amazing. And she's like, oh, I've got to do it. I go, do it. I go, fuck them. Like, yeah. Do whatever you want. Yeah. And then so by the next Christmas, she had already started like, nice. got it. I'm like, that's fucking tough. And then I remember asking her, what do you want to do for your 40? She said, oh, I want to like, jump, out, jump of out of a plane. Yeah. One of the things. Or maybe I brought it up as something. She says, yeah, I've always wanted to do that. I'm like, so do it. 
Oh, no, I never actually booked it. I never looked into it. So then I booked it. Like, nice. Beautiful it present. It Gorgeous. But that's what, like, it's completely attainable. <laughs> yeah. But if it ticks that much of a fucking box, yeah. get it done. You're right. People just talk about it. They don't action it. Like, so. my, one of my big things was getting a, my bike license. Yeah. That was a big bucket thing. And for me, it ties into, like, a whole lot of things about independence. Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Traveling, doing it overseas. Yeah. I've always liked it, yeah. but it was unattainable yeah. because I didn't have the schedule to fit it. Mm. I didn't have the finances to fit it, and I didn't think I would actually be able to do it. Yeah. You know, I never looked into how much a bike costs. I never looked into – I was always working every weekend, so it was just like, well, when the fuck am I going to yeah, ride? Exactly. Where, am, where am I going to put it? Like, yeah. I don't even have a fucking place for a bike. Where I could know. live, yeah. Yeah, but then when I looked at it, I'm like, okay, this is what it costs to get my license. 500 plus this plus that plus this plus that. I'm yeah. like, hmm. What's a regular, what's a bike cost? Like starting price yeah. for a decent bike. Okay, this much. I'm like, maybe I can do it. Yeah. Fuck it. You put your mind to it. I'm not working it. weekends anymore the way I was yeah. under the conditions I was. All right. So I did it. Tick. But that's what I mean. Yeah. And man, I, I ride more than I drive now. That's great. 100%. And now that it's summer. Well- oh. May. Well, if you call it summer. Oh, well, today was a magnificent day, though. But It's Melbourne. It's Melbourne. People don't want to complain about weather in Melbourne. Clearly, I haven't I lived in complain. Melbourne enough. I don't complain. I love You don't complain. No, I love Melbourne. I just tired I've of feeling got you everybody on else. Two hours and 24 minutes <laughs> of unprecedented complaining. Oh, really? Okay. Well, <laughs> let's just see about that. Let's see how you track with this episode when it finally comes to light. Well, that's up to me, if really. If he actually <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, to That's up to me. I get the final life. call. <laughs> well, clearly. Well, so. you can get your own studio and produce your own podcast. Oh, you can determine well, what you want to do. thank you very much for letting me be in your little haven here. Are you shit-canning my... Oh, my God. I'm being sincere. I can't talk to you. Seriously. Uh, you have for 25 <laughs> minutes and six seconds. <laughs> You're fucking funny. Nah. I'm not trying to be funny. Oh. <laughs> Okay. As he laughs. No, let me, yeah, but I make myself laugh. That's Good. the whole point. Yes. I don't rely on anyone to make me laugh. That's it. I'm serious. It's, I'm, People ask me, someone asked me, um, I did that voiceover for uh, Peter, Jackson. Peter Jackson, yeah? Yes. And the guy that I was asked me to do the Adam Bar impression, we were just talking about it, and he asked how I got into it. And I said, honestly, I started doing voiceovers just to make myself laugh. Yeah. I want to be able to imitate the movies and shit like that that I watch. Because they were funny, so I wanted to be able to imitate the lines back and make myself laugh and make other people laugh yeah. with the impression of that. That's how it actually all started. It's really weird. Okay. And then when you work enough shift hours at you know four in the morning and you're just talking to yourself, <laughs> if I could do you a practice. voiceover, yeah, if I could just do a voiceover to make myself laugh over it, yeah, then I, I every time. <clears throat> Is there a character that you enjoy mimicking the most? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good question. Um, I don't know. I used to do Tran Long a lot. Okay. Tran Long was a Vietnamese worker. Right. Because we were working in a warehouse in Mulgrave somewhere just wiping down vinyl walls. Right. And then one day I just went off. I can't remember what it was. Something triggered me and I just started talking about <laughs> Tran Long working in a textile factory. <laughs> you know, 20 hour dollar a week. Good job. Good pay dollar. <laughs> Cash. And it just grew exponentially Oh, my from God. That. It was bad. <laughs> Did he realize? Who? Tran Long? Yes. No, it was just an amalgam. No, Tran Long wasn't a physical person. Oh, it was he an amalgam- became a character. It was an amalgamation of like a bunch of guys bunch that I worked with. A bunch of guys. With. Love it. And then he just became like a third Does he member. come out every now and then? No. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You can't do that kind of impression anymore because no. it's frowned upon. True. But it shouldn't be because it's just an impression of a character. It's not a racial impression. Yeah. There's no racial epithet like, so behind it. So, what are your thoughts on Chris Lilly then? Oh, doing the... Um, yeah, the Samoan and... Because he copped a lot of flack. I think there's something to be said about using blackface. It's the blackface thing, right. There's yeah. something to be said about it. Mm. And his impressions border on the line of insulting because yeah. it's he's using racial stereotypes, mm. which... A pretty then no, they're not. It's, I'm not concerned about having to show everything in a positive light, yeah. as you clearly know. Yes, it's not about the positive light, but you can't punch down on someone. Correct. So it's it's stereotypical. It's a fine line, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like Tran Long, right? Mm. Tran Long has has worked in every fucking warehouse <laughs> I've ever worked in in my entire life. 
Yeah? Yeah, so it's Good real dollar, life. Good dollar, good job, pay cash. You know what I mean? My sister Doreen. Doreen. Set you up, good woman. <laughs> like, that is not punching down. No. But if I started bringing up shit about eating fucking dogs yeah. or well, that's other different. bullshit. That's next level. That's that's punching down. <clears throat> yeah. So Chris Lilly, I felt some of his shit was funny mm. and he's clearly talented. Mm. But some, especially with the Samoan character. Yeah, that went Jonah. Yeah, like, yeah I feel like he yeah. punched down a bit on that. It went a little bit too far. And then the argument with the blackface though, blackface in its original form was literally a caricature, mm-hmm. right? They were punching down on black people yeah. and they didn't want them in their stage shows, so they just dressed up in blackface. Yeah. Having said that, Eddie Murphy dressed up as a Chinese man in that, oh was it God. Norbert? Norbert, yeah. yes. Pure <laughs> Chinese. So and he was critically acclaimed. That was so funny. Coming to America, one of the funniest movies of all Amazing time. Amazing movie. And I've spent my whole life trying to impre- do impressions. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Every time it was on TV, you watched it. He's, he's wearing whiteface. He's yeah. a Jewish old man. Love, 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 love. Just so good. So, is he punching down? No. No. He's playing. Couldn't they get a Jewish old man to play that role? Of course. Or was it more, I mean. Yeah, just thinking that through, it's an interesting take, isn't it, really, when you think about it from that. But again, it's a minority talking about, it's a minority. Aren't Jews a minority? They are. It's a minority playing a minority. Okay. So I think from that perspective, it's probably seen a little bit more acceptable. How is that? But how is I'm, that? I, I no, no, I'm not attacking you. <laughs> I'm just saying for the point of argument, mm. how is that any different? Well, because white men are the majority, right? So when a white person does blackface, they're, it's almost like okay. the majority versus Here's the minority. One. Hank Azaria in The Birdcage. Thank oh my God! He's played amazing. a Puerto Rican housekeeper. Sensational. Agador. They should have got. Like, yeah, the uh, argument would be: Why didn't you get an LGBTQI? Person? Okay. Yeah. So, why is it okay for Hank Azaria to do it? What year was that made? Ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, we weren't anywhere near. Ready. Hank Azaria is Sephardic Jew. <laughs> so is that a minority? Well, isn't he? But that's what I'm saying. He's Sephardic Jewish. Yeah. So wouldn't that make him a minority by definition? Sure. So wouldn't but that he's- be? Okay, or is it he's I, taking a job away from a gay person? No, I think in that instance, he wasn't taking a job away from a gay person in, uh, directly, but indirectly, I'm sure others would disagree. And but then that's that fine. means that gay people shouldn't be doing straight roles either. Like Will and Grace. Like um, He's a straight actor. Jack, yeah. He plays the most... I bull- fucking love... I was watching episode after that, episode before I, I came hate, here. I hate that fucking show. Oh, really? I love it. I hate that show. <laughs> Why? Because it's just shit. Oh, it's shit writing. I it. But I always give prop to the actors because... He's amazing. Yeah. He's playing a, a gay dude straight as a fucking yeah, arrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is the thing. This is where people got it twisted, all right? It's one thing to say, you know... Eddie Murphy should not have played the Asian dude in Norbert because they should have given it to an Asian man. Mm. What Asian man? He's playing a Chinese guy. Does that mean only Chinese actors of Chinese descent? Yeah. Or no, we can throw a Filipino in there because he looks Asian, so it's fine. It's yeah. all the same. Isn't that worse? Or Vietnamese yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Having said that, this is when the issue gets – this is where the line should be drawn. Mm. When they do biblical movies yes. and they have, you know uh, – What's it called? Charlton Heston mm. playing, uh, you know, someone out of the, the the fucking Bible. Yeah, people in the Bible were set middle aged, uh, middle ages. Sorry, Stone Age fucking uh, Middle East. Mm. Yeah, time of the Levant. They were dark. They were dark as anything. Yeah, yeah. They were Arabs. Yes, Arabs bordering Africa, and they've got Charlton Heston playing someone. Yes, whitest man in America. Yes, that's when. Hmm. It becomes a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the whole thing with James Bond. Do you agree with it right now? I don't know anything about that. Well, they're Shit. saying that James Bond, oh. the next James Bond, should hmm. be cast as a dark. So, someone else. As in, yeah, it could be someone dark. Like a Jamie Foxx or something like what, that. I think Idris Elba is like throwing Oh, he's amazing. Oh, he's a good actor. Mm. Right? But the character of James Bond mm. has always been. Yep. Because Ian English? Fleming. Ian Fleming wrote it. An English dude. I was talking about it with the boys today in, in our WhatsApp group, and mm. one of them said, he sh- James Bond has always been 
a white guy that can seamlessly blend into a crowd because he's a fucking spy. Correct. He's an English character. Like, yeah. literally, that is how he was written. Yeah. If you want to redefine who the character is and rewrite fucking 100 make books. Make a different one. Make a different one. Yeah. There's no problem creating a new spy. Correct. Dwayne The Rock Johnson threw his hat in the ring. Really? As being the James Bond. And wow. he said, not a villain, have to be James Bond. I'm like, well, hang on. Wait a second. <laughs> Number one... I don't think you have the acting chops to pull off James Bond, <laughs> right? Firstly. Yeah. Number two, James Bond is an inconspicuous agent. He's like this fucking Hulk. Ex- exactly. <laughs> That's what one of the boys said. His yeah. shoulders would give him yeah, away. Absolutely. His big fucking bald head and massive yeah. shoulders and pectorals the so size of watermelons. Turns, so that it loses its integrity. Create another spy. Yeah. Have yeah. it part of the, the James Bond fucking... Uh, universe. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't be James Bond. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense. It's also PC, isn't it? Really? But that's the point. It's this line, and mm. we've shit on that line. Yeah. I think we're still finding our feet on all that Of stuff. course we are. Society, yeah. civilizations only been gone for how many thousand years? Yeah. The Industrial Revolution happened when? Like, <sighs> we're fucking useless. We are useless. 19, in the 50s and 60s, segregation was still massive in America. It sure was. How can you say to me we've div- been div- we've come further than anything? When- Look at our indigenous communities here. Exactly. They're still fucking uh, fighting for half the rights that we have. That's the point. Yeah. White I- Australia policy was still in effect in the 50s and 60s. So fucked up. That is not that long ago. No. That no. is not that long ago. That was in my parents' lifetime. To my lifetime. So my parents are grandparents now, mm. and it's still in their life. They can remember it. Isn't that shocking? We've got so much to fucking learn. We're fucking dumb. We're actually stupid. We are. Like I said in the very first sentence, I'm a fuckwit, <laughs> but I acknowledge that I'm a fuckwit, and there's still so much more to learn. Yeah. That's why I expect people to sort of, you know, be kinder. Yeah. Because, quite frankly, half these motherfuckers aren't perfect themselves. No. That's my whole fucking point. Everyone's just making shit up as they go along. Exactly. We're yeah. still feeling shit out. Yeah. We're still feeling shit out. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Fuck this shit See, welcome to the podcast Love This is what it. it's about Thank you for having this me This is why I can't focus on dark and depressing <laughs> shit Because we were seemingly laughing About something pretty positive a second ago And all of a sudden I'm fucking depressed and want to shoot myself No, well, let's turn it around Show me something else about Madonna that you hate <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what We'll close on this I'm going to find it All right. Okay. Um, no reason Okay Going back to that co- comedian that I played the um, Yoko Ono bit about. Yes. What's okay. his name? Bill. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Like I said, this guy is- Your been, idol. Is beat. He was- He's my favorite- Well, he's not a new comedian now. He's revered now. He's, he's a comedian's comedian, right? Right. But when I discovered this guy, maybe 2009- Right. What are you laughing at? I'm looking at the title oh. of the YouTube video and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? No reason to hit a woman. Yes. This is why I'm playing it. Oh, dear. We're not okay. going to play all of Am it. Am I going to get angry? No, no. <laughs> We're not going to play all of it. You're just going to hear the premise. Okay. I thought I'd pull it up because okay. you're a feminist as am I. Okay. So, yeah. Right, let's go. <laughs> let's do this. No, we have these huge battles. You know what the maddest she ever got at me was? One time she was watching this show, it was like a poor excuse for The View, and they started talking about domestic violence, right? For the nine millionth time this year, they're talking about domestic violence, just in case, you know, you didn't get the memo, you know? Evidently, you know, just some people didn't get it. It's not okay to slam your wife's head into the cupboard drawers because she didn't dry the can opener off properly, you know? It's gonna fucking rust, right? How do you not know not to do that shit? Do they really have to keep talking about it? Uh, who, who, it's like wife beaters watching for... Oh, fuck! Ah, now I get it. Up to Daisy, sweetheart. Here we go. There you go. Oh, dear. <laughs> so at the end of the hour, they come to the logical conclusion. They're like, there is no reason to hit a woman. There is no reason to hit a woman. And I was just like, really? I could give you like 17 right off the top of my head. You can wake me from a drunken stupor, I could still give you like nine. Wow. There's plenty of reasons to hit a woman. You just don't do it. Uh. But to sit there and suggest that there's no reason. Dude, the level of ego behind that statement. What are you, 
levitating above the rest of us. You're never annoying. <laughs> Women, how many times have you thought about slapping your, your fucking guy in the head Once. this week? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Every day. Love it. You didn't do it, right? Brilliant. Oh, dude, it drives me nuts. There's no reason. There's no reason. Really? No reason? How about this? You marry a girl, you fall in love, you buy her a house. You go to work every day, paying off the house. You come home one day, she's banging the next door neighbor, hands you divorce papers. You got to move out, sleep on a futon, and still pay for that house that she's going to stay in. No reason. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do it, but there's plenty of Three fucking reasons, reasons yeah. in that arc of a story. <laughs> the logic's there. That's so right, That was a about. hypothetical. <laughs> you want an actual story? I'll give you one. I'll give you one. All right, I fucked up my foot playing drums, trying to get my bass drum foot as fast as uh, John Bonham's, because I figure that's a good thing to focus on. 43 years of age, never married, no kids. I figure this, this is going to lead me to the light. Okay? This, this is what I need to do. So I don't know what I did. I, I felt like after I, I played for like an hour, and afterwards I felt like literally like there was some midget stabbing me in the bottom of my foot, right? Like I had lightning coming out of the bottom of my foot. So I did the typical guy thing. I'm like, I'm not going to the hospital. I'll sleep it off. I'll be fine, right? Next morning, I wake up. My foot's even worse. And I got to walk my crazy dog. So I'm like, I can't do it. My foot's killing me. So I wake up. My girl I go, sweetheart, sweetheart, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Can, can you walk the dog for me? Can you uh, just take the shift? You know, I'll do your afternoon shift. Can you just do me the solid? Can you do this for me? And she's just like, oh. <laughs> you know, I had a late, late night last night. I'm tired. I have a big day. And I just go, fuck it. <laughs> she goes, what do you mean, fuck it? It's like, why can't you just say no? Why do you always got to, like, waterboard me with, like, a 20-minute explanation that eventually winds its way around to go, fuck yourself. Just say no. Love it. So I'm just limping out of the room. Whatever. Go back to bed. You got a big day. Right? <laughs> so now I'm, like, limping down the street. I got, like, Tourette's. Fuck, goddamn bullshit. Dog's walking next to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to admit, I got a little childish. I did. I got a little childish, you know? I was just thinking about my relationship. I'm like, this, this is the relationship I'm in? You're just going to do whatever the hell you want to do, right? And fuck me? Fine. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do. I feel like listening to my iPod on full blast, walking around the house. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> my so that's what I did. Turned it all the way up, and I just, I, my whole plan was just to walk by her like I didn't even know her. That was it. She came down the hall. I just ghosted her. Just walked right by her. <laughs> Just trying to piss her off. And I got to tell you something. Work like a charm. Oh, <laughs> work like a charm. Oh, dear. Yeah. Hung my coat up. Turned around. By the time I turned around, she was already yelling at me. <laughs> but the music was so loud. Not only could I not hear her, it actually looked like she was singing the song. That I was listening to. Oh, one of the highlights of the relationship. Oh, dear. So I knew what she was saying. I was like, whatever. I don't want to talk about it. Leave me alone. I'm going on to the computer, right? So I limp over and I sit down. And unbeknownst to me, she's like, no, we're going to talk about this right now. Oh, Comes out, poo, and slaps the headphones off my head. Oops. I got a big, I got big ears. It fucking hurt. <laughs> So I'm like, honey, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. Put the headphones back on. She comes right back up again. Poof, slaps them off a little harder. <laughs> this time they spin halfway around my head. <laughs> Caveman DNA starts coming up. Talking through my teeth. Honey, leave me alone. Don't want to talk about it, right? Put them on third time. She comes up. Poof, slaps them right across the room. And I snap. I'm like, fine. You want to have the fight? Let's fucking have the fight. <laughs> She's like, we will discuss this later when you come down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right there. I just wanted to roll her up on her yoga mat and stuff her behind the couch. <laughs> and leave her there until she got thirsty. Come on, let me out of here. Spin class. Oh my god. Major point. This is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> that's great. No, you okay? That's the thing. Yes. My cheeks are really, that's the thing. I, I hate that saying. There's no reason. Obviously, I'm not saying to hit a woman. You know, but saying there's no reason. I think that's crazy. <laughs> When you say there's no reason, that kills any sort of examination as to how two people ended up at that, at that place. <laughs> if you say there's no reason, whoo, you cut out the buildup, you just left with the act. How are you going to solve it if you don't figure it out? Mm -hmm. Look how awkward it is in here right now. <laughs> Love it. I said you shouldn't hit a woman. I'm just saying, how come you can't ask questions? You can only ask questions about what the guy did. You can never ask about the woman. Why is that? Why is that? What is that? 
What does is, what is answer him right mean? What does that mean? Are you the idiot who got up halfway oh through God. the special <laughs> during the bit and you're like, Roasted. Like, I'm not fucking wow. Here. What's wrong with you? Wow. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Shit. Fucking had to ignore all of that and now you're going to like yell out? And not only that, <laughs> yell something that makes no fucking sense, sense whatsoever? <laughs> answer him. <clears throat> answer him. Oh, Jesus. Every fucking special I do, there's always one. <laughs> always right down the fucking middle. <laughs> Talking about hitting women, sweetheart. <laughs> and I think you just added another reason. Ooh, Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. I love this. I'm not even in a relationship with her, and she's fucking nagging me. Uh, I'm going to watch this Too whole thing. fucking funny. I can't believe you've never heard of Bill Burr. I've heard of him, but I've never watched him. Well, he's a misogynistic prick. He is, clearly. (laughs) With a loving wife and daughter, another kid on the way. I like the rationale. But that's the whole point. That's what's missing. Rationale. Mm. Logical approaches to shit. Sure. That's what annoys me. Yeah. When we throw shit out, like, let's give give the kids the key to the car, (sighs) and we'll just sit here and pretend every... When they start running over shit, we'll just pat them on the back. Yeah. And say, so you can be a racing car driver. <laughs> Makes no sense. No. And then when you question it, people are like, you're an animal, you're dated, you're, what are you, 80 years <laughs> Archaic, old? Archaic, yes. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. It makes no sense. It doesn't. Wow. I'm going to go home and watch the rest of that Bill Burr. Watch, watch, the, whole, watch the whole special. <laughs> it's actually really good. There's That's one thing. Awesome. There's actually one part I'd love to see your reaction to. Maybe we'll watch it after we switch off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> are you okay? I'm great. It was great. Thank you. Have you ever laughed? Okay, let me ask you a question. Okay. Have you ever laughed as hard as you just did to anything Hannah Gatsby's ever said? <laughs> no. <laughs> Point taken. Thank you. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I gave that to you. No, you didn't. Just saying. <laughs> you didn't give me shit. All right. All right. No, no. I'm being honest. I'm being honest too. No, that was very funny. Thank you. <laughs> and I haven't laughed at her like that. That's my point. Okay. Hannah Gatsby is being branded as Australia's up and coming <laughs> rising star, best export ever. As if Jim Jeffries doesn't exist. <laughs> Who's Jim Jeffries? Are you for real? <laughs> I clearly need an education. But that's my point, right? Bill Burr's not for everyone. Not for everyone. No. Not for everyone. No, but, is Hannah, to be fair. But <laughs> you'd never heard of this dude before and you've lo- you're rolling. <laughs> Your cheeks are hurting. <laughs> they are. If you can honestly mm. admit that Hannah, you've never laughed at anything Hannah Gatsby said as I hard as you I swear on my life. That's my point. Okay. And that's all I'm saying. Okay. Are that's we, all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I have to close because you're going to have a heart attack. Oh, my God. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> you make me laugh. It's oh, it wasn't me. It's Bill oh, Burr. Oh, oh, it's Bill. Okay, it's Bill Burr. Burr. <laughs> he makes everyone laugh. That's excellent. Thank you for the education. <laughs> I know your life is now going to be more enriched, oh. more fulfilled. <laughs> oh, dear. Because I've been watching this clip for literally, you know, oh, it's 2016. It's 2016 and 16,000 views. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I discovered this guy's stuff in 2010, <laughs> okay. 20, 2009, 2010, well, 11, somewhere there. I've just discovered him in 2021. So there you go. But that's my point. Like, the standards have been dropped, and the fact that we're coddling. And accommodating to be all inclusive. Yeah, it's like, hang on, man. Sometimes the st- the bar is set high for a reason. Yeah, we set the bar high. Like, not everyone can be an Olympian. No, not that's very true. Every fucking person that puts on a pair of runners is going to run a marathon. No, they're not going to get on the track and run a hundred meters in ten seconds mm. flat. But we shouldn't pretend like them running the hundred meters in six hours is a bad thing. Is worthy of the same. <laughs> Praise. No. Because you're setting out to run in 10 flat, not six hours. If you want to go for a run, go for it. Knock yourself out. Love it. You're doing it because, you know, you want to stay fit? By all means. Congratulations. I could never run for for six hours straight. Yeah. But can we not pretend like there's gold medals for everyone? Everybody, yes. Because I had to graft, and this is as good as it's getting. Yeah. I feel like I'm at the pinnacle right now of where my life is going to be. It's fantastic. I'm probably being pretty pessimistic, but it keeps you grounded mm. moving forward and mm. it gets you to work even harder, harder. Yeah. and set bigger goals. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being content with your life. Yeah. But if you bitch about where your life is at because you haven't reached the heights and the acclaim that you feel you deserve, 
and you're not going to push any harder. Mm. I have complaints. I have a lot of complaints. But that is my fucking point, man. Full circle. You said it before about accommodating. That's what we're doing, and I'm over it. I'm yeah. fucking over it yeah. because now everyone can be a star. Yes. What do you mean? <sighs> I'm so glad The Bachelor and The Bachelor are tanking right now. Oh, so so it's about fucking time. glad. It's about fucking time. There was some show that, that came up, and it was a uh, Susie Yusuf was hosting it. With um, I think with your boy, what's his name? Um, Which boy? It was a Reno show. Uh, hang on, not the block. No, 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 no. It was trying to copy that shit. Um, uh, hang on, Susie. Hang on, yeah, she's a com- uh, comedian. <laughs> well, she can call herself that, but um, making it Australia. I've never heard of it. Exactly. Right. Lasted like twelve episodes. <laughs> okay. Susie Yusuf is a comedian who we've tangled with on this podcast before. Okay. Uh, yeah, we were uh, blocked for oh. making a joke. I've, I've explained this story a hundred times. I'm not going to explain Don't, it. Anymore. I'll look it up. It's fine. No, 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 no. She, uh, she was put on a show as a host, right? Uh, it's called Making It, mm. right? And it's a reality show based around like home renovations plus like um, uh, like it, it's basically – Oh, she- it's DIY based. I know who she is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the show got canned after like 12, 12 episodes or okay. something. And they're wondering why it didn't pick up. Or maybe because she's not that talented. She's just the wrong fit for something like that. But that's my point. Why are they trying to retrofit Bec- people into this situation? Because she's cheap. She's on the Channel 10 as it is on the project. Mm. So they figure they'd repurpose her yeah, no. in a reality show. No. Rather than reach out to someone new and do yeah. something different. Let's just repurpose everyone. Dude, Bert Newton passed away. Yeah. All right? Poor old Bert. Not poor old Bert. He lived till his 80s <laughs> as one of Australia's golden boys Icons. who couldn't do no wrong. Yes. Yeah? I, I knew, because I worked in events with the back, backlog, backstory and all these events mm. that happened in the name of charity, mm-hmm. that good old Bert would charge 40k to appear yeah, at. Yeah, I know. Free food, free booze, free transport. He was very undercover. Mate. Okay? I know. <laughs> um, it's been a running joke mm. that- Every time, a, like every time a musical comes up, mm. Burt Newton's the first person off the block <laughs> to be cast it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Running joke. Yes. He I'm did. over it. Yes. The man lived to his 80s, literally in luxury in this country. Yes. Went out with you know his uh, his leg got amputated and so forth and so Sad. forth. Yes. Of Sad. Course. Yes. Yeah, no yeah. one wants to go out like no. that. Yeah. You want to die? Uh, um, you dignity. know exactly. But having said that. He lived a pretty good life. He got he a state did. funeral. He I'm did. never going to get a state no. funeral. <laughs> no, you and I will never get one of those. I'll be prosecuted under state, but I won't, be, <laughs> I won't get a funeral. Am I yeah. better than Burt Newton? No. Who's to say I'm not? Who's to say Who's to not? say I am? Right? But that's the point. Okay? They're repurposing people like Susie Yusuf to go on these fucking reality shows, mm. and they wonder why it tanks. Why? Because we're giving everyone fucking gold medals. Yeah. Burt Newton came up at a time when there's relatively no competition. That's right. But he set a standard as far as Australian television media goes, right? Him and, and, and his mate Kennedy. Graham Kennedy and right? Don Lane. Exactly. Don Lane and Graham Kennedy were kings. They were amazing. Kings. Burt Newton had to be there, right? Mm-hmm. And between the three of them, yeah. they did what they did, mm-hmm. right? But it was a time when there was relatively there was no nothing, competition. There was no other choices. Nothing. Yeah. It was still black and white. We still had, what, three televisions, uh, four television stations back then? I can't remember if exactly. That. Yeah. I can't remember. Channel 7, 9, and 10. I was three. Oh, and the ABC. And then Channel O, which is now SBS, came about much later. Yeah. Do you want who I feel doesn't get enough credit? And I actually give him a lot of, I give him a lot of shit, Mm -hmm. but it's still an interesting fact. I only found out recently. Franco Cozzo. Yes. Right. He had his own, um, uh, his own show, right? Mm -hmm. And it was only, was his own show? I think it was his own show, but it was the first one in Australia. Right. To feature, to be, uh, not not English. It was before SBS. Oh, wow. He beat SBS by 10 years. Serious? On ethnic uh, diversity. I had no idea. Legit. He did his ads. To, and I was reading about his backstory. Yeah. He literally was a door-to-door salesman. Yeah. Couldn't speak English. Yeah. But that, he didn't let that stop him. He literally figured out where all the wogs lived. Amazing. And started marketing directly to them. And then he made the first ads in English, Greek, and fucking Italian. Italian, yeah. And he predated SBS by 10 years. <laughs> Insane. Insane. Where's, he better get a state funeral. Yeah. Like, seriously. Um, he's quite a philanthropist as well, I hear. Yeah, well, so, he had to do something. His son got busted. Too. I know, right? Shipping how, drugs. How fucked up is that? <laughs> <laughs> but see what I mean, man? Yeah. 
and it, like Aussie media is the worst for it, like a hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Tall poppy syndrome at the same time rehashing totally just the same shit over and over again. But it's that gold medal to people that can't even get off the fucking couch. Yeah. It's also, I mean, that translates across all forms of, you know, even with kids, you know, God forbid you come last, you know, you can't come last, you need a fucking medal even if you come last because, you know, we don't want jo- no. Johnny crying in the corner because he hasn't got a medal. But that's the point. Yeah. Like We all can't be winners we all the time. We can't be winners, mm-hmm. right? We can have a winner's attitude and set goals to be winners. Yes. But you can't be first every single, single time. fucking time. Correct. You can't keep redrawing from the bank when there's nothing there. But that's what failure does to you when you, I say failure. When you don't achieve that goal every single fucking time, it should drive you and elevate you. But that's the point. Mm. We need more education on how to how to deal with losing. And that's I think that comes down to empowering our the next generation and giving them the tools to know that just because they don't have a fucking successful YouTube account or they haven't got a gazillion fucking followers does not make them lesser people than anybody else. But that's what I mean, though. We've gone over. Yeah, so we're going to swing the pendulum back a little bit, right? The term influencer <clears throat> needs to be stricken from the record. Mm. That, as a viable career option, needs to be taken off the table. Yeah, unfortunately. They're not influencers. It's not going to happen right? for a while yet. They are not influencers. Mm. Okay, they have the power to influence, but yeah. they can't influence shit. Yeah. All right, when you've got maths contestants yes. that have got 1.4 million followers literally just taking their clothes off in front of a camera, <laughs> and somehow that's an influencer? Yeah. How? What sort of an influence is it? That's my point, right. that this is mainstream media. Mm. This is mainstream media. This isn't hidden. No. This is an undercover circuit. This is literally what is in our schools, man, yeah. like literally what yeah. people see. Ah, oh, it's quite depressing. We've gone back to the depressing again. My God, can you put the rest of that Bill Burr thing on? Because I just want to go out on a high note. I actually, no, but I love the fact that I got a feminist to laugh <laughs> at Bill Burr and unequivocally <laughs> state that he she's never laughed harder. Oh, you're fucking funny. <laughs> oh, no, Bill Burr is fucking funny. Yes, that's why. That's why this is it. This is the room. This is the room. <laughs> It's the room. Okay. Okay. Thanks for having me. No, no, hang on. Ah, oh, I thought four, you were winding me up. We're four minutes shy of three hours. Oh, right? so, so what are we going to talk about d- for nothing. four minutes? <laughs> this is your final closing statement. My final closing statement. Why do I feel like I'm on trial? <laughs> <laughs> the defense. The defense. <laughs> Can we give them a defense? The defense rests its case. Okay. No, no, no. Last, <clears throat> last thing. All yeah. right. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't get the touch on... <laughs> You entering a field that, um, and doing it on your own essentially, right? Yeah. Yeah. That in itself is like a testament. What can you say moving forward would be like an, an unequivocal final message to anyone that needs to break out of like that sort of the stereotype? Yeah, the stereotype and what it's already deemed to be, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's really interesting um, in our field. Uh, graduates are predominantly, make up predominantly 85%, yet it's a male-dominated industry. Yeah. I, I think I've told you this story. I had a guy come in for an interview many oh. years ago <laughs> um, and uh, you know, chatting. I was, you know, looking for a junior burger at the time. He's like, so who's the boss here? And I said, mm, that would be me. He goes, oh, I don't think I could ever work for a woman. And I went... I beg your pardon? And he goes, oh, I don't feel comfortable working for a female boss. And I said, okay, well, thanks very much for your time. <laughs> uh, we'll be never seeing you again. But just the audacity of him. And he was only probably, I think he had a brain fart. You know when people just have brain farts and they don't think about what it is they're yeah, saying? Well, that's a big brain fart in a job It was a pretty fucking major brain fart. And I just thought, wow, this is what it's about. So I guess my advice... Again, it's not about being male or female. I just to fucking just do what you want to do, right? <laughs> and have some respect, and don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And it shouldn't. You shouldn't let, um, you know, whether you're working for a male, female, LGBTQI fucking person, it doesn't matter. Just let's be human and have some respect and go for what it is that your passion is. If you have no passion, you have nothing. I agree. So. 
passion is the key and um, determination. Again, just harping back on what it was like for me uh, back back in my day, you know, being a, a, a Greek doing design or communications at the time was there wasn't very many of us, whereas, you know, the Italians were the cool kids because yeah. Italians have always got a bit more style and sure they <laughs> panache sure they and understand design better than us Greeks. Sure they do. So there was always this clear divide, you know, and I think that also came down to us having really unpronounceable fucking surnames. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not kidding. It's it's a really big thing. Um, that whole Anglo perspective or something that doesn't sound romantic or there's too many fucking consonants and instead of vowels or like it just doesn't compute with people. They can't get their head around it. Yep. So, uh, you know, I'm like, fuck it. I'm not changing my name for to suit anybody anymore. It is what it is. Um, and... Yeah, I just think all power to anyone that can actually rise up and stop that form of prejudice that we still get as an ethnic majority or minority because we are a majority in a way, like our Greek culture here. No, we're an ethnic majority yes. within the ethnic community. Within the ethnic we're community. We're still a minority within the Australian community. the Australian community. community, right. So <clears throat> anytime that... I get asked where I'm from. <laughs> yes. Proves that we're still a minority. Yeah. Do you still get that? I got that like a week ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, I still get it too. Where are you from? Were you born here? I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? How can I not look like I'm born here? It's quite strange. So, again, be creative, be yourself. It's not strange. It's ignorant. It is. It's not strange. I find it strange because I still ignorant. can't com- com- compute that in my head say it for after what it is. all it's these fucking years that say, we're still say having what the it is. same conversations. It's ignorant. Yeah. My mother came here when she was in her 20, early 20s. She's in her early 70s now. Mm. She spent 20 years in Greece, 50 years in Australia. Yeah, but she's still called Greek. Yeah. Does she's, she identify as a Greek or an Australian? Australian. Yeah. You tried telling someone else that though. But that's my point. Mm. Her accent, she's got an accent, yeah. but it's not heavily caked on. No. But the her, English have accents. And her English and her English is pretty ex, pretty advanced. Yeah. She has a decent vocabulary. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Why should she have to justify where the fuck or explain where she's from? Exactly. She's spent fifty years here paying taxes. Yeah. She's worked here, educated here. She's got more of an education here than she did over there. Yeah. What more do you want? Yeah. What more do we need? Yeah. Don't be defined by boundaries is what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I played you this clip. Almost positive. Oh, I love this clip. Yeah, but we'll end it on this, okay? Yeah. It separates people's passion. Having a, the ability to focus on something or to work on it will allow you to work hard enough to be good enough at it. Mm-hmm. That's the Kobe Bryant run. He outworked those people. He like, you know, people, a lot of people in the league perform according to their paycheck. I ain't getting that money. Let them do it. Kobe was there every day. Yeah. And practice. that's what separates him and makes him special to us in a different way, even after he's gone, right? So thinking of that, that's one thing when you can actually commit to yourself and what you want for your life and you work that hard at it. Oh, commit to yourself. There you go. Yeah. That you literally go. encapsulates everything you've said for like yeah. the last three hours. Thank you. I think I did all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to your Have help. I said a negative thing? No, no never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Been most entertaining. Entertaining. Yes. And supportive. I'm and not... brought me full circle lots of times. So thank you. That's actually, that's the one thing I try to do is bring things full circle. No, it's because great. Because there's a fucking point. Mm. There should be a point to half the shit we say. Correct. Yeah. I talk a lot of shit, but at the same time, like, there's a reason. There's, a, you know, people don't circle back enough. No, they don't. Yeah. You know? Everyone just goes into different fucking directions and yeah. rabbit holes. Exactly. They forget get, mis- they get misguided. You. They lose sight of the big picture. Mm. They forget shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Whereas I know I may be aimless sometimes in, you know, like I never, th- obviously I don't think where my life is right now, it may not be where I thought it was going to be, mm. but mentally I'm I'm headed to the place where I want to be. Good. I've had to redefine the objective, but plan A stays the same. Yeah. There's no plan B. Yeah. I may have reworked it. I may have redefined it. Yeah. But it's still plan A. There's no falling back on. No. Because if you're going to keep falling back on, eventually you're going to end up doing 
being somewhere where you don't want to be and you're going to have no one to blame but yourself. <sighs> There's always many different routes to get where you need to be. Yeah. Right? So you can pick and choose. I think, look, it's a very broad statement. We can be fortunate enough to say that we live in Australia and mm. we can actually see some... We've got the... Tr- yeah. We have the, the ability. The luxury of... Yeah. We have semi-luxury of being able to say, yeah, you know what? Like, yep. let's get to there and we'll figure out how. You can't say that to a kid in Angola. No. You know what I mean? Correct. And it's, especially with the, the whole racism thing, it's, you know, Chappelle actually touched on it in the closer. You really should watch it. And he said something like, don't question me when I'm telling you, even if you don't understand where I'm coming from, mm. don't question it. Just understand that I'm actually going through it the way I'm saying I am. Yeah. You'll never see it from my side of the fence, no. ever. Yeah. Just understand that I'm going through something. Yeah. That's all you need to say. I get it. <clears throat> you know? You but, know? Yeah, but that's what it means to communicate and share, regardless of how it affects other people. Honesty? Oh, yeah. Yeah? 100%. So <clears throat> not everyone's going to deal with the honesty part. And yeah, you're right. You know, people throw their fucking arms up in the air when a comment's made and get sensationalized and the media holds on to those little fucking grabs that create all the clickbait that we get sucked into. But yeah, if you give something a bit of time, you might rethink the way that you actually process your own thoughts. But that's the point. I'm over, over the media playing up the angle of clickbait and, you know, toxic and blah, blah, mm. blah, and mental health mm. when they've got the bachelor on repeat yeah. in the same fucking breath. <laughs> what does that do? Are you not seeing it? Yeah. You're creating the toxic That's, environment. Yeah. You're promoting I can't it. keep going back to that. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, let's end it. <laughs> let's fucking cut it off at the knees. Seriously. Like, we ha- the power's with the people, right? We just need to exert some people power and spread the word. I was watching an episode of Duckman today. Duckman. you never seen it? I have seen it. That, is okay. that a, that's a cartoon, yes? Of course it is. Yes. It's the best cartoon you're I, ever going to um, see in your entire life. I used life. to watch Duckman oh, probably a decade ago. It, well, it came out in the 95. It predated South Park. Yes, it did too. Literally predated oh, South Park, man. Yeah. It was the See, beginning. I've got my years fucking all mixed up. Calm down. <laughs> Still think I'm 22. <laughs> We're all 22. <laughs> Um, hang on. Let me just find it. There was one clip. Ended on this, okay? Forget 50 Cent. Um, hang on. Is this it? Uh, I hope to God it is. Oh, he's having a whacked out dream. <laughs> All right. It's a dream sequence at the start. I won't play the whole thing. Okay. But he gets to like a big un- unveiling. All right. It's going to get ugly. <laughs> I said stay back! One more step and I'll, 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 and I'll pull back this curtain! <laughs> That's right, it's This Could Be Your Life, the show that each week takes a memorable personality we can cross promote with the evening news and asks the burning question what makes him or her so unique, so special, so one of a kind? We'll watch them on TV rather than go out and have a life of our own. Tonight's guest, an incomparable crime fighting hero. Duckman. That that sums it up. Yeah, literally sums yeah. it up beautifully. That's literally the quote I got. Someone sh- shared this with me today, so I watched the whole episode. Yeah, and that line yes stuck with me. Well, yes, it's because it's fucking true. What makes any of these fuckwits on TV that special? Where we need to watch them. Yeah, where we need to stop living our lives and going out and living our own. Life. It's one thing to live vicariously through your son, sure. your single friend, you know, whatever. It's another thing to get on the bandwagon of some fucking stranger that's done literally <laughs> nothing. nothing in their lives. <laughs> that Do is... you hear about? Oh, um, what's the name of that Paralympian? The um, the Aussie that's retiring. Oh, um, um, I did see something around her. Her name has escaped. No, me. not her. Him. Him. No, yes. there was also a female that got promoted. Um, <clears throat> she stepped down. She won a um, a medal just at the Tokyo Olympics. Um, oh Jesus! Oh, you, you find Nia McCarthy is who you're talking about. Yes, thank you. I wasn't going completely insane. <laughs> wow! Yet, <laughs> yet, <laughs> yet. Um, oh, what's his name? He's the Aussie guy. Oh, um, the, our tennis player. Yeah, um, Dylan Orcott. That's it. Have you ever read his CV? He's fucking amazing. We were looking at it last year. We were sitting around at work talking about it. 
He's like he's a, dude. He's yeah. Mate, he needs a state funeral. He's won. He's won like medals in like three or four different Olympics in like two or three different events. Yeah. Right, two or three different events, multiple games. He's written like X amount of books. Yeah, and I think he's the only Paralympian that's won the whole circuit in the tennis. Yeah, like some massive yeah, yeah, slam. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's 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 multiple books. He's an MC for like events. DJ. Like DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was just his bucket. His, his CV was just huge. Yeah. And I'm like, how has this man done all this? Extraordinary, like, extraordinary story. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But there probably aren't enough people who even know he's, he exists. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, we need more of that. How has he not got 60 billion followers like on his social media? Because the media doesn't promote him. He's not sexy enough. The, the amount of times I've seen the same headline about the Queen mm. and what's happening with her health. Bitch, she's 100 years old. Oh, my God. She's 100 years old. What do you want to happen? I know. She can't live forever. Who gives a shit? shit? Yep. She is literally the last... Pilgrim of mm-hmm. colonialism. Yes, yes. Oh, there's more to come, but that's, yeah, she's. But like, yes, I agree. She was alive mm. when all these, her, her nation was still invading Baby. countries. <laughs> that's very true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Shame. I'm pretty sure her flag was raised over some impoverished indigenous people somewhere. Totally. In her, under her control, yes. or at least her immediate relatives' control. Uh, yes, focusing on all the wrong fucking things. That's, That's my what point. what it is. Yeah. How could you feel right now? I feel very relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel relaxed. Okay. We'll end it there. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming down. No, thank you for having me. Um, yeah. I, I hope it's been entertaining for you. Oh, for once. Not oh, for once. Yeah, I know you've called me entertaining before. I don't like being called a jester. Ah. I didn't call you a jester. Yeah, you did. Did I? I, I think I said to you, I'm is not. That in I'm not a, I said, I'm not a jester. <laughs> is, oh, <laughs> <snorted. laughs> <coughs> I'm gonna funny. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay. No, I'm gonna leave it with that snort before you can redeem yourself with a witty comment. <laughs> Smart ass. Hold up.